Howdy y'all, welcome back. Thank you for being here. Today we're going to look at the Temple of Hercules Victor, also known as the Temple of Hercules the Olive Bearer. This exquisite building, as you may have guessed, sits in ancient Rome, specifically in the former Forum Boreum, which was once the sprawling cattle market for the entire city of Rome. What stands out most about this structure is the fact it is considered to be a tholos, from ancient Greek meaning conical roof. It is a round structure with a wall in the same circular shape and a roof usually built upon a podium as this one is as you can see here. Often these buildings contain a ring of columns supporting a small domed roof. The Temple of Hercules Victor is one of the most intact examples of a tholos that we have surviving from the ancient world. Interestingly, the exact purpose of this structure is still open for debate. While many modern scholars believe these buildings serve secular purposes, most assuming they contain the ever-burning fires which guided ancient pagan beliefs, others find that the purposes of these structures might have been even more esoteric. Incredibly, the Temple of Hercules Victor is the oldest surviving intact marble building in Rome, and the only surviving Roman building in the entire world made entirely of Greek marble. The temple is 48 and a half feet in diameter, with 20 Corinthian columns standing nearly 35 feet tall each. The structure was said to be built during the 2nd century BC, however the architect and even under whose command the temple was built is still open for debate. Being one of the oldest buildings in Rome, the oldest surviving marble building, and showcasing serious Greek origin has only made the Temple of Hercules a point of contention. As we look through the oldest photographs known to exist of the Temple of Hercules Victor, we ask, as our ever-changing understanding of history continues to flourish into something new, can we put our hands into the proverbial mouth of truth and pull out anything concrete related to the purpose of these structures? The Mouth of Truth was a real creation shown here and was known in ancient times to have quite a different purpose. Take this all with a grain of salt, but the Mouth of Truth through medieval times was used as a quote, way to test honesty and sincerity. One would place their hand in the mouth and if found to be honest, would not be injured. However, as the legend goes, the massive mouth would crush down on any liars. Now take that myth how you will, but scholars today believe before it was removed from the Temple of Hercules Victor, the Mouth of Truth actually lied directly below the oculus of the temple. Indicating its true purpose, the Temple of Hercules had a small oculus or hole in the center of the roof, allowing rainfall to enter into the chamber. It is believed in the center of the room, built directly into the floor, directly below the oculus opening in the roof, was the Mouth of Truth which has open eyes, nostrils, and a mouth. It is now theorized that sacrifices were made to the god Hercules inside of this temple, with the mouth of truth being an ancient representation of that hero. The sacrifices would flow through the mouth of truth, thus feeding the war-hungry Hercules, and the oculus opening in the roof would allow rainwater to wash the residue away. Furthermore, as far as ancient depictions go, the Temple of Hercules is repeatedly shown depicted in Renaissance art with the Mouth of Truth being a representation of the size and stature of the ancient heroes of old. And given its massive size and the other depictions of similar creatures found around Rome and the ancient world, one can only hypothesize the meaning. The Temple of Hercules Victor has many intriguing, if not dark, examples of questioning the history, and yet for all it's worth, the true history here still seems to elude many of us. Are we on the trail of giants, 
of the biblical tales and legends of old, which once seemed like myth, but now appear to be more fact than fiction, is the Temple of Hercules Victor, just one way that Romans kept in contact with their pagan beliefs? Or does the truth actually stem from something far deeper and far more esoteric than that?